Well, I buried William Richard Bowie, 11, 1894, was a Canadian writer, author of 15 novels, two memoirs, six history books, and three travel books. Life and career. He was born in rural East Mapleton, Nova Scotia, son of Augusta Baird, a school teacher in East Mapleton, and Stephen Baird. A few years later, his mother was left a widow with two stepsons and three sons as his father died of pneumonia. As he became a teenager, the family moved to the nearby town of Amherst, where his mother began running a boarding house. The family at this time was in need of money, so Will and his brother were unable to complete school. By the time he was 23, he decided to go to Alberta and work on the harvest to earn money. This was the case for many men from the East who were recruited to harvest crops on a prairie sea harvest excursion. Soon afterwards, war broke out in Europe and Will's youngest brother, Stephen, was in this only to be killed in France a year afterward. Bird had volunteered for service overseas at the same time as his brother, but was rejected due to his poor teeth. Will Bird returned home to Nova Scotia, wanting to take up his brother's place in the military, and he enlisted immediately. By this point in the war, the Canadian Expeditionary Forces standards for dental health had been lowered, although Bird was required to have some teeth removed in Britain before being sent to the front in France. He served in France and Belgium at the front for two years with the Canadian Expeditionary Force 42nd Battalion Royal Highlanders of Canada at CEF. His time in the war embattered his life as a writer as his war experiences were constantly a part of his stories. One of his finest works, and we got on 1930 documents his time in France. Another book, Ghosts Have Warm Hands, recounts his experiences during the war and his emotional connection to his brother Stephen, who was killed in action before Bird was allowed to volunteer for service. Once he was demobilised in 1919, he returned to the village of Southampton, Nova Scotia, where he married Ethel Sutton. Together, they had two children, Stephen and Betty. Will had become a partner in a general store there, but the store failed in 1923 and the family moved back to Amherst. There he found employment in the post office. While living in Southampton, he wrote his first story and won a newspaper essay contest. This was the beginning to his career as an author, and in 1928 he decided to support his family by writing. His stories were accepted across North America by such magazines as the Saturday Evening Post, Toronto Star Weekly, Family Herald, Maritime Advocate and Weekly Star. His first book, A Century at Chignecto, was published in 1928 and was followed by a steady succession of fiction and non-fiction titles over the next 40 years. In 1931, he was sent back to the battlefields of France by Maclean's magazine to write a series called 13 Years After. The series became a lecture in a book published by Maclean's in 1931 and over the following five years was given to Canadian Legion branches throughout the Maritimes. In 1933, he began work at the Nova Scotia Tourist Bureau, moving to Halifax in 1938, and he worked as chairman of the Historic Sites and Monument Advisory Council, remaining there until his retirement in 1966. When Canada went to war again in 1939, Byrd lost his only son, Captain Stephen Stanley Byrd, of the North Nova Scotia Highlanders. This caused him to enter a long period of writing, creating many stories that showed his grief. Bird won the Ryerson Fiction Award twice, in 1945 for his days Good Yorkshire and in 1947 for Judgment Glen. Bird was president of the Canadian Authors Association from 1949 to 1950 and was succeeded by W.G. Hardy. Bird died on January 28, 1984, in Sackle, New Brunswick. Counted among the descendants of Willa Bird are the brothers Lee Bird, 1983 present, and Robbie Eustace Bird, 1985 present, who work in the field of writing and animation. Maritime History A Century at Chignecto 1928 Story of Bobas in Historic Nova Scotia 1935 Done at Grand Prix 1955 Story of the Expulsion of the Acadians War and Military History And we go on 1930 World War Private Timothy Fergus Clancy 1930 13 years after 1931 Memoir of the Communication Trench 1932 Trench War for the Two Jacks 1954 Story of Two Canadian Heroes of the French Resistance No Retreating Footsteps 1955 Regimental History of the North Novas The North Shore Regiment 1963 Ghosts of Warm Hands 1968 Reissue of And We Go On Travel This is Nova Scotia 1950 Off Trail in Nova Scotia 1956 These are the Maritimes 1959 War Private Timothy Fergus Clancy 1930 Novel Historical Fiction 
The maid of the marshes 1933 privately printed his day's good auction 1945, Rise and Fiction Award, Coburn 1945, Judgment, Glen 1947, Up Pash at Pilgrim 1949, So Much to Record 1951, To Love and to Cherish 1954, The Shy York Chairman 1955, Tristram Salvation 1957, Despite the Distance 1961, and I Must Have a Wife 1969, Semi Fictional Account of J.F.W. Despar's Angel Cove 1972, 19 Stories About the 1920s Newfoundland Fishing Village. Village The Misadventures of Rufus Birdie 1975